Did you know over 40% of adults in the U.S. are deficient in vitamin D? <laughs> I know, I'm mentally deficient. In vitamin D? <laughs> yes, yes. Well, yeah, that's why seasonal depression is so huge. Because the well, sun... you're not getting vitamin D? Yeah, sun's not out. I thought the sun had vitamin C. So I don't... Vitamin D, that unleashes the power of the sun. Sunny D. Is that why it's called Sunny D? Yeah, dude. Because orange juice has vitamin D? We should record. <laughs> yes. All Wait, right. Wait, then what is scurvy? Scurvy is when you lack like vitamin, like certain vitamins from like fruit. And so like your I don't know, your body's like lacking vitamins. And you turn like yellow or orange. They should have had the Sunny Deep mascot be a pirate. <laughs> yes, and Oi, this- welcome to skin, matey. <laughs> it's like- falling off. <laughs> He has scurvy. <laughs> that would be so bad for the brand. Because it's like you're supposed to not have scurvy when you drink it. I've got scurvy, but ooh, this sunny D tastes good. <laughs> God, I wish I had this sooner. <laughs> Arg. <laughs> All right. Hey, guys. Welcome back to Violating Community. Uh, guidelines. With Brittany and... Sarah Sauer. <laughs> yes, Brittany's eating and drinking. This so is much. literally, oh, citrus fruit essence. I got this water because I liked the color and I just tasted it and I thought it was fucking sewer water. <laughs> It's just citrusy. Do you think fruit tastes like sewer water? Sometimes. <laughs> you ever eat like a too ripe, like orange or something? Or like banana. Yeah, and they're yeah. not sweet at all. And it's just like, your better. jaw kind of locks up. <laughs> yes. better? Bitter. Well, you like to, bitter. Oh, you like to eat brown ass bananas. I do, because like you can also make banana bread, you know? And that's fun. <laughs> yeah, just... but that's like the essence of banana. You like to mush on like brown <laughs> fruit fly bananas. I'm practicing for when I'm 30 and I'm teething. <laughs> 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 and I'm just like gumming it at the IHOP. You yeah. make me chew it up and <laughs> yes, spit it onto yes. a plate and you eat it. Yes. Okay, so today's topic is tweet decking. Tweet decking. I fucking hate tweet decking because Twitter is my my platform. Yeah, that I you love. are kind of a registered Twitter comedian. <laughs> Say something else. <laughs> Registered Twitter comedian. Yes. Um, so for those of you who don't, who are not familiar at all with Twitter culture, mm-hmm. Twitter comedians, Twitter is, I would argue, yeah. before we kick all this off, um, it, I would argue that a lot of viral memes and jokes that have infiltrated the rest of the internet through all the various platforms start on either Twitter or Reddit. Yeah. Um, They start there and then they are recycled until they're unusable anymore. They go from Reddit to Twitter to Instagram to TikTok where they make them in video format. Yeah. Then they end up on Facebook where they go to die. Yeah. Would you agree? I would say that they pretty much died like when they left the platform that they originally started on. But Mm -hmm. like when it has reached Facebook, the joke is dead. Uh, Yes. It's completely dead. When your mom is sending it to you through Facebook DMs like, isn't this (laughs) funny? It's like, mom, please, God. It's like a planking meme. Literally. (laughs) Yes, mom, that was funny, like, when it happened. When you and your girls start mocking each other, (laughs) it's the Spongebob meme. (laughs) Mom, please. Bay and I, when we, you know. Literally me and Bay. Yeah. Or it's like, uh, grab my butt and buy me pizza. It's like, this was literally 2008. How did you just find this? Yeah. (laughs) So I think that that's important to note when we talk about this, because the idea of stealing content and plagiarism online is really the underlying theme here. Yes. And we've both been victims of it, which we can talk about later. Yes, we can. All right. Would you like to get into what yes. it is? So um, let me tell you a little bit about tweet decking. The concept of stealing content online and where it exists in the internet world topic is so incredibly vague. It exists on all social media apps, basically plagiarizing for clout, likes, and follows. The term tweet decking has been washed away with an actual program Twitter has made called Tweet Deck, where you can schedule tweets to post at a specific time. Is that the right word? Washed away? So re- I would say it's been diluted. Okay, yeah. So research, research on this topic has boiled down to looking up, researching current and past social accounts that may fall under the term tweet decking. And so there are like a lot of very famous accounts like known for like tweet decking, which we're going to get into. Um, so tweet decking, some Twitter accounts with large followings, makes th- they make thousands each month by selling retweets. But I wouldn't consider that tweet decking. No. I mean, unless, like, they have stolen, like, copy and pasted, stolen a joke, and then they, like, um, do you know what, I, I don't, that's not tweet teching to me. Tweet teching is when well, you... Well, this is the the definition that Stanley, our researcher, found online. So, okay. of course, it's going to be a little different in practice. This is more like the business model of tweet decking. Yeah. Versus kind of what we see just as 
users Hooligans. online. Yeah. Yeah. That's just goofballs. <laughs> Slack jawed weirdos. The practice is known as tweet decking, mm-hmm. so named because those involved form secret tweet deck groups, mm-hmm. which they call decks. Scoring an invite to join a deck usually requires a follower count in the tens of thousands, so you have to be a somewhat popular known account. Yeah. Um, known for posting funny stuff. A deck is one of any columns in the TweetDeck application that consists of either different accounts. So you can be logged into multiple accounts at once. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a notifications tab, a DMs tab, and they're all open at once. So within these decks, a highly organized system of mass retweeting exists yeah. in order to launch deck members' tweets and paying customers' tweets into meticulously manu- manufactured virality. And that's a very... Good way to put it. Yeah. Meticulously manufactured virality. Yeah. It's like a big old circle jerk. Yeah. Uh, So like all these people with like tens of thousands of followers post like a funny thing and then they all agree within the deck like that or the chat, I guess, that they're all going to retweet each other. And so it just spreads to each person's like following Mm -hmm. and then it blows them up. Mm -hmm. It's a very artificial way to grow. And my question for you, because you're way more active on Twitter than I am. And I, I used to be active I got banned for posting a picture of Spirit the Horse with his cock out. We all know this. I got banned. And it hasn't been the same (laughs) for me. Um, I want to know how you feel Mm -hmm. as an online comedian who really enjoys the Twitter sphere. Dude, you know what's going to happen is we're going to do this and then someone's going to go through my Twitter and find like the stupidest dumb shit ever where I'm like, poop was green this morning. (laughs) And like, they'll be like, this is Sarah's comedy right here. But it is. There are some good ones. Sorry, you don't have a sense of humor. (laughs) Sorry. Wait, what was the original question? Is how do you feel as someone who is original and creative and mm-hmm. has been doing this for years, watching these paid tweets yeah. going out? I just get like really annoyed because like I more get annoyed when um the the tweets move to Instagram. Yep. Because like you, and then they crop your username. Yeah, yeah, out yeah. Of yeah it. They crop it. I'm like, you didn't have to do that. I'm like, but it's just like so fucking annoying because like people will um but on Instagram a lot of the times my followers were like will be like, tag Sarah, because like, they know it's mine, because right. it's you know, deliriously unhinged. And it's like, thanks, yeah, I remember writing this. <laughs> yes. And then they like usually like delete those tweets or just end up tagging me. Like in, Back in the day, it was worse. I feel like 2015, mm. 2016, like, they would just crop your name yeah. and then like block you so you yeah. couldn't see it. Unabashedly. Mm-hmm. But that's also a large part of why like large tweet deckers on Instagram are private, mm-hmm. um, to make it <gasps> seem like exclusive, but also to keep people out. Is that the reason? Well, it's like, so, because um, like if someone goes private, you you are less tempted to unfollow them because like you know that you can't just get back in. Yeah. I know that you experienced something similar with your burner account. Yep. Brittany has like a you want to tell them? Well, that's a little different. I feel like with um with these meme accounts on Instagram, which is what they are, yeah. they're meme parody accounts, which I'm going to talk about later because yeah. what the fuck is a parody account? <laughs> yes. Who are you parodying? Other people being funny? Yes. <laughs> No, I'm saying that you have a you had a burner and what happened is you made it private and yeah. then like people were like, Oh, I can't get in. And oh, so yeah. you when people unfollow, they were like, fuck. Cause yeah, I, it's they, the FOMO. Yeah. Let you, me in. No bitch. And so the the tweet deckers like they like made created FOMO so you don't leave and yeah. then they retain their audience. But also like if there is a content creator who's like, This shit is mine. Like you ever have that thing happen where someone DMs you something, they're like, Have you seen this? And it yeah. says post unavailable. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing of like where they go private, it's probably your post. Right. Yes. Um it's also, well, yeah, the reason that people do that is so if it is stolen content, and these pages have millions of followers. Yeah. I mean, these meme pages have like 4.3, 4.5, 10 million followers, and it's all just recycled stolen content. And mm-hmm. I think that that is an added level, added layer of um, you can't make a fuss. Yeah. It's on a private account. Yeah. It's not like they're still a- <laughs> You yes. can still sell shit to a private account. Actually, wait, can you advertise with a private account? Of course you can. I've never done that before. Well, yeah, because we don't have private accounts. <laughs> but you had one for the longest time, so I thought maybe- I've never done an advertisement on my spam account. Okay. But it's it's also because companies won't advertise traditionally on a non-verified account. Yeah. I know that, you know, there are creators that aren't verified that get brand deals, but that's not- you know, they're not getting paid the big bucks. Yeah. So that actually, I never thought about it like that, that they gatekeep the content yeah. that's already stolen. <laughs> yes. Oh my God, it's so infuriating. <laughs> they're what like, I some... don't want anyone to steal what I already stole. No, they get so <laughs> fucking weird about like, I curated this. Yeah. You curated other people's fucking content. And we're going to talk about Fuck Jerry later. Yeah. Fuck Jerry is a very famous meme curation account that yeah. is just stolen 
posts mm-hmm. and they make money. <laughs> yes. And when the original poster tries to reclaim their content, fuck Jerry does a copyright strike against them. Really? Oh, I could talk about this for hours. We'll get into it later. <laughs> okay. But I want to add, do you have any on the top of your head um, stolen tweets that you still see circulated? Oh, dude, no. I think like there's one where it's like I tweeted... Um, like I'm like you're hitting on someone. It's like uh, I like a girl who's good with their money. And then the girl says, um, "If the city can't identify your body, they'll bury you for free." And um, <laughs> they crop out my name every time. And I, and I see it pop up, and I'm like, "That's definitely my shit." You're like, That's funny. Who posted <laughs> that? Oh yeah, me. <laughs> I had one go viral that um, R.I.P. The tweet no longer exists because mm, I got banned. Yes. Um, it was, uh, I'm surprised that British people don't call mac and cheese pity wickles and chonkers. <laughs> yes. And I, I did it in like the alternating lowercase yes. and uppercase and it was really big. I got like 400,000 likes. Shit. And um, of course they screenshotted and cropped my name out. Yeah. And so they're like, this is so funny. <laughs> they, this? Literally they'll tag me in it and be like, reminded me of you. I'm like, I fucking wrote it, bitch. <laughs> yes, yes, I wrote it. Yes. Oh, I, I've done that thing. So I, a lot of my jokes on TikTok originally are things that I've tweeted in the past. Mm. And so like I got... Uh, time hop and time hop shows your post from the past and so like i when sometimes since i've been online so long i'll like post my jokes that i wrote seven years ago on twitter that blew up and they're like i saw this on twitter. yeah and I, i'll like put it i'll put it on tiktok they're like you're not slick this is on tumblr it's on tumblr because i put it on twitter and people screenshot it and put it on tumblr yeah oh wait oh my gosh i can't remember the one that like that was that's what happened Oh, crap. But yeah, uh, people will be like, I know that you stole this from the... I was like, I wrote this. Yeah. Do you know how old I am? Right. That's yes. different. And we're finally in this age where <laughs> with TikTok, there are so many accounts <laughs> that make their... Like, they have a following because they just yeah. recycle, but they don't even give credit. It's yeah. not even like the green screen effect with the tweet on it and then the guy that just like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like gesturing to yes. it. It's literally like they'll just remove that whole thing, yeah. type the meme yeah. in a text, and just be like, "Does anybody else think?" And, yes. then they're just, <laughs> and it's the, the most viral song of the moment, right there. Yeah, it's just literally it's a new wave of stealing content. Yeah, of plagiarism in its most like eloquent form. Mm-hmm. But I always do love the people who come and like to save like in the comment section. They're like, "This is definitely on Twitter." Mm-hmm. I just love those people when they just like swarm. Yeah, yeah. That's like the one time where the comment section is like really beneficial to it. You know what? For better or worse, TikTok comments are good about that. With yeah. dance credit, yeah. with joke credit, with idea credit. Yeah. Like um, <laughs> when the the <laughs> BBL trend went yes. around, like BBL effect. Yeah. Um, Anthony Boomba created that. Yeah. I fucking live for Anthony. And they were like, every time someone would recreate it, they're like, tag the original creator, tag yeah. them. And then I think that's really incredible like to be able to trace, here's the person that made this trend. Yeah. And I think that the biggest example of that was Charlie D'Amelio and the mm-hmm. Renegade Dance. Yeah. And I'm blanking on the original creator's name, but it was a young black girl. Yeah. And like how that happens so often on TikTok too. Yeah. Hello everybody, it's Brittany here from the podcast, you know me, and today's episode is sponsored by Honey. I love online shopping almost to a degree that is concerning for my friends and family, but nevertheless, we persist. And for all that shopping, I rarely have a coupon or discount code that works and isn't expired. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online, ranging from sites that have tech and gaming products to popular fashion brands, even food delivery. So here, imagine this. You're shopping on one of your favorite sites. You're checking out. Oh, the honey button. It drops down. All you got to do is click apply coupons. Ah, wait a few seconds as honey searches for coupons and they can find for that site. If honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. I don't know why I turned into Bernie Sanders just now, but you get the idea. 
I actually recently bought some more gear for my camera, and Honey actually helped me save on those tech purchases. And it's so satisfying when you see the coupon applied. Ah, mwah, love that. There are about 17 million members who have joined Honey, and Honey has saved them over $2 billion in savings. Imagine that. So here's the deal. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. It's literally free and installs in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. You know I'd never recommend something I don't use, so go get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash VCG. That's joinhoney.com slash VCG. Hey guys, Brittany here. If you're longtime fans of the podcast or me in general, you know that I've had quite the hair journey figuring out my style. One thing I've learned is that there's no one size fits all solution when it comes to hair care. A product that works wonders for curls might make straight hair limp and greasy. And unless you're a french fry, no one wants that. But thanks to my personalized pros routine, I can honestly say I've never been more in love with my hair. Pros makes custom hair care that's effective because it's personal. Using natural ingredients with proven results, Pros customizes every product in your routine from shampoo to supplements. First, Pros starts by asking about you as a person with their in-depth consultation. Pros asked me really unexpected things. I was kind of shocked by the quiz. Like, does your hair retain odors like food or if you've been outside? Which, if you were wondering, yes, it does. And it's humiliating. If I even, like, stand by a restaurant that sells barbecue, I smell like it for the next five days. Next, in the questionnaire, pros analyzed all my answers and determined what unique blend of ingredients should be in every product of my custom routine. Together, pros got all my hair goals covered. I got like this pre-shampoo scalp mask, which slays, and I love their dry shampoo too. As a carbon neutral certified B Corp, Pros is an industry leader in clean and responsible beauty. All their ingredients are sustainably sourced, ethically gathered, and cruelty-free. They're also the first custom beauty brand to go carbon neutral. Period! <laughs> If you're not 100% positive Pros is the best hair care you've had, they will take the products back, no questions asked. Pros is the healthy hair regimen with your name all over it, so take your free in-depth hair consultation and get 15% off your first order today. That's pros.com slash VCG. That's P-R-O-S-E dot com slash VCG for your free in-depth hair consultation and 15% off. Thanks, guys. I am, but I do like the idea of, like, um, the commenters do have, like, some sort of, like, humanity. Like, they're like, you know, tag these people, credit these people, and then they, like, pause, and then they're just like, you fucking ugly cunt! (laughs) Can you please tag the original person (laughs) who made this dance? Like, that would be really nice. I ran straight to the comments. (laughs) You're so brave for posting this. Shut the fuck up. You look like... Um, my brain is working at 13% today, so I'm really trying so hard to keep up. But so back to the tweet decking thing. Customers, yes. which can include both individuals and brands, pay deck owners to retweet one or more of their tweets a, spe- a specified number of times across deck member accounts. Some decks even allow customers temporary access to the deck, almost like a short-term subscription to unlimited deck retweets. It's literally a, it's a business model. I know it is a business model. It's literally like seven guys who like live in their mother's basements who are yeah. like, we have 40,000 followers. Followers. We're gonna get so rich. <laughs> yes. Have you ever seen those like tweets where it's like, guys, um, sadly, my mother passed after her 30 year battle with cancer today. And then like beneath it is the same person who's like, wow, this blew up. Okay, so now that you're here, um, I buy direct. <laughs> Check out this yes. LED light system, yes. galaxy lights. Yes. Check out my SoundCloud. Check out my friend's SoundCloud. Whoa, this blew up. It's a picture of your dead dog that you yep. cremated. It's it's insane, actually. Like Twitter culture and like threads on Twitter yeah. are wild. <laughs> they really are. Oh, I kind of want to do like famous threads now. <gasps> Wait, write famous... that down. Write that down. <laughs> Single retweets tend to cost around five dollars or ten dollars. Week or month long subscriptions can cost. <laughs> um... <laughs> oh, that had vomit. That was deep. That was. <laughs> that wet. was from the seventh grade. <laughs> I felt all the gum in my stomach detach and come up my throat for a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, week or month long <laughs> subscriptions can cost several hundreds of dollars depending on the deck's popularity. Now, I want to reread this paragraph and replace deck with dick. Dick. <laughs> yes. Some dicks even allow customer temporary <laughs> access to the dick. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Wait, how much? Okay, if someone were to be like, Brittany, can you retweet something in mine? How much money would they have to give you? It wouldn't be well, like. A re- first of all, I would have to think it's funny. Yeah. And then my mind is like, well, I'll just retweet it because I think it's funny. You don't have to pay me. Yeah. I have done um, campaigns on Twitter where it's like a famous musician Mm -hmm. is like their album is coming out. Can you tweet about it? Can you retweet their post? Those never work. They never work because if people aren't actually excited for the music, you're not going to drive engagement by being like, oh, fucking kombucha girl, (laughs) retweet it, don't it tweet. But you know what? I'm going to keep taking money from these record labels because they're so off the mark. Um, (laughs) Usually for those, it's about four to 7,000 Yeah, for like a retweet or a tweet. Damn. But I think the thing is, is like, I just forgot. Like Twitter is a very unique platform and so is Reddit in that it's largely text-based. I mean, you can obviously post videos and like- but Porn. (laughs) People don't use Twitter for like the video content unless Mm -hmm. you're watching like porn. Mm -hmm. And so like that's why ads do better on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok is because like people are- Simple, you yeah. know, you're watching the video. You're like, oh, I love Bud Light. Yeah, and oh, I'm a simple person. When I see yeah. hashtag ad or hashtag sponsored, I fucking scroll. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not going to like the tweet. But that's also a workaround if your content on TikTok like, keeps getting taken down. So, like, if your content is, like, um, like they, for some reason they keep flagging you, if you start adding hashtag ad to your content, they're not going to take it down because it's taking money off the site. But, I mean, I feel like there's some ethical... There is, but also like you're, if there's no product that you're actually selling in the video, like you're not like you Your know body. tricking people. <laughs> you're, you're selling yourself. Yeah. No, but I mean the platform's gonna be like, oh, this is paid content. Sure. I want paid content on my platform. Sure. So like if you notice, like you know, you're talking about something important to you, like being a lesbian or eating pussy, like just put hashtag ad. Oh, that's interesting. I have done that like a lot, and now it looks like I'm paid out the wazoo. Yeah, I was gonna say that's. <laughs> I, I think that's funny when like. A, a creator who's popular enough but isn't like a list yeah. social media celebrity if they're like day at the beach with these fat ugly whores <laughs> hashtag beach hashtag summer hashtag ad hashtag yes. bud like all that hashtag I think renegade that's, hashtag <laughs> renegade hashtag bay as fog uh-huh. I think that's really funny yeah so maybe that's a way to do it as if you're doing it ironically I don't if I come across a video of just someone like dancing and I see hashtag ad and I'll be like what the fuck is this and scroll do you think that I I said that I do it like do you think that I'm like dancing I, I, I would assume that you're doing a brand deal whose content is being taken down because they're dancing like it's so bad like it's not even violating a community it's like oh you can't dance no, no rhythm Only- <laughs> <laughs> you're like notification from TikTok is like bad <laughs> not good the team said this is hard to watch <laughs> All yeah. Right. Anyway. <laughs> All right. So people who run their own decks frequently make several thousands of dollars each month. Um, these customers pay a few hundred dollars to gain temporary access to the tweet deck so they can retweet themselves across several of the powerful deck accounts, pretty much ensuring it goes viral. It's all calculated. Yeah. And I like there's like popular ones that like a lot of people know, like fuck Jerry and Dory. Mm-hmm. And they're the most like I'm going to look up the most basic Dory tweets. Maybe the reason why it's called Dory is because they keep forgetting that they're saying the same shit over and over again. Oh, yeah. No, okay, so here's an example of a tweet deck. So this is Dory, uh, typical girl, perfect couple. Um, these are all, like, tweet deck names. Um, it's just RIP to all the fathers who couldn't be around today and the soldiers who are spending Father's Day away from their families. You are missed. While that is good, all three of these accounts with millions of followers tweeted that word for word. And that's, like, the idea behind a tweet deck. Yeah. You know, like, you have to build popularity with, like, a very basic, general, like, sort of feel-good things. Yeah. Yeah. These are all, I mean, and you know what? If you're not chronically online, you wouldn't know that this is a problem. Mm-hmm. Like, because the posts are, at the core, relatable. Mm-hmm. And that's why they can copy and paste across 1300 different accounts yeah and they all get relatively good engagement yeah it's when it's shit like i just looked it up too here's a dory post from 2016 how disappointing is it when you mentally put an outfit together thinking you'll look smoking hot then you put it on and look like a potato (laughs) and it's the upside down smiley face relatable though but literally for someone who has like no sense of humor it's like like potato. Brittany. you know what that was stanley so (laughs) Fuck you, Stanley. Fuck Fuck you, Stanley. Fuck you, dude. And Jerry. Yeah. No, yeah, but there's like, so there's more. It's like senior year really hits you when you have a great summer turns into have a great future slash life. It's so true. Yeah, but I know if my mom would read that, she'd be like, damn, (laughs) if that ain't the truth. She'd be like, yeah, I stopped talking to a lot of people after high school. (laughs) It's literally like, I I read this shit. And when you see the side by sides of like girl posts, 
sexual gifts. Mm-hmm. Dory, fuck Jerry. I want to be like, wake up, sheeple! <laughs> You're being fed content through feeding tubes, you fucking curate your own timelines, you fucking nerd. <laughs> you idiots. You idiots. <laughs> Um, but it's also super funny, like, you know, you said sexual gifts or, like, best of sex or, yeah. like, sex between it's friends. Like, God, I'm so lonely. And it's just like, I'll put this money in my savings so I don't spend it. Oh, look, money. <laughs> <laughs> Why is sexual gifts, like... <laughs> Thanks, sexual gift. Yes. The next post is just DP. Yes, it's just... It's just so awful. That is true. Um... So then, wait, wait, oh, this is interesting. An owner of this tweet deck said they made between 3000 and 5000 a month doing this, and he pays members of his deck based on who has the most page activity for the month via PayPal. Um, at a 19, and a 19-year-old named Louie, a.k.a. I'm not going to say his name, who said he both runs a deck and is a member of another deck. He makes between 2000 and $3,000 each month. Just from, like, retweets of other people's content or the most basic shit ever. Yeah. When you eat pizza and fart a little... <laughs> Good one, and that made him fucking three thousand dollars. You know, I say that and now. I'm one of the people. Yeah. Who <laughs> you don't know it's a tweet deck account. You're like, mm, all right. I do for a little. <laughs> My asshole does speak Italian. <laughs> when I eat pizza, <laughs> it is rolling its R's. <laughs> what? Before we... What? What? Before we started recording, Sarah said, do you have a tissue? I need to blow my nose. <laughs> yeah. But she accidentally said, I need to blow my butt. And yeah. I was like, what if you blew your butt the way you blew your nose? <laughs> well, I mean, like, you could. Like, you, you could. You don't have to poop, like, oh, poop over a toilet. You could just, like, put a little, like, a blanket. <laughs> my <laughs> shit would, like... Like acid eat through the Kleenex. Yes. The eat citizen, it. the citizen app would get a notification that a car backfired, and it would just be me shitting into a napkin. <laughs> Was that gunshots? No, it's too close. <laughs> Nuclear waste on the corner of La Brea. <laughs> Members make less, but not insignificant amounts of money. Several members of Dex said they can earn hundreds of dollars each month just for retweeting tweets onto their account. Um, and then the question is, yeah, that was. I have not been offered money to join a tweet deck. Um, I think really? It, yeah, because I think I've been just so adamant that I hate them. Um, mm. And then also, I have been paid for a Twitter campaign, but I feel like that's separate. Have you? That been, is separate. Have you been paid for a Twitter retweet? Yeah. No, but I mean, like, but for a campaigner by someone. Both. Oh. Um. Back in the early days, like 2019, kombucha meme, mm-hmm. like, because I, the meme went viral on Twitter. And yeah. so I made sure that I was on Twitter. I unprivated my account. Um, I started posting more kind of funny content. I started posting more of my TikToks on Twitter because yeah. I was like, well, if this is doing well. Um, and there was one day in... August 2019, where I gained in one day, in a 24-hour period, 96,000 followers on Twitter. Damn. In one day. Like, it was insane, the engagement I was getting. And around that time is when these tweet deckers fucking swam up on me like sharks. Yeah. And they were, how much for a retweet? How much for a retweet? Please? Oh, my fucking God. Please. Oh, my God. Yes. And I was like, I don't, like, 25 <laughs> bucks for a retweet? I don't, what? Like, 25 bucks. Damn. I was like, I don't know about all that. I don't need, like, no. Yeah. I'm not hurting for money that bad. And it never got up to the point where it was, like, 100, 200, 300 bucks. It all re- stayed relatively below $100. And I was like, I'm not going to sell out. Like, I would never sell out. Yeah. And now look at us. <laughs> it's such but a I think there's, fucking sellout. Yeah, there's a difference between, like, Joe Smith being like, how much for my retweet? And yeah. the retweet is just his fucking SoundCloud. It's yes. his pinned tweet and it's his SoundCloud of his shitty song. It's a selfie. Literally. No, <laughs> yeah. That's literally it. Yeah. Like, how much for you to retweet my pinned tweet? And it's a picture of them. I think it's the funniest thing ever when someone promotes a tweet on Twitter, but it's just a selfie. There's like, it's just like, I'm cool. <laughs> it says promoted with the arrow. It's you know like, that thanks. they did like no targeting on like, um, What's that, like, posting app where you can, like, social blade or something like that? I don't know. Whatever. But, yeah, it's just, like, who does who is this targeted towards? Anyone and everyone. Anyone with <laughs> eyes. Yes, yes, yes. And genitalia. Yes. Um, you've never 
accepted money for a shout out? No, or dude. A... I think I've just been so vocal about how much I fucking hate them. When you're a creative through and through and like you're actually putting time, and I know this sounds stupid, like uh-huh. trust me, we're hyper aware, we're self aware. <laughs> Being online creators, it's not a serious profession, but Mm -hmm. it takes time and effort to come up with original content. And when you do that and when you post it and it gets good engagement, that's something to be proud of. Yeah. Why the fuck? (laughs) If I know the value of Uh being original and creative and posting all that shit, would I accept money to promote your bullshit? I know, especially if it's bad. I'm like, especially if it's bad. Dude, um, okay, so like, I don't mind shitty music because music taste, I feel like, is more subjective. Like, humor, everyone, I was, everyone listens to music too, but like, mm-hmm. everyone like knows what's a good fucking joke. Mm-hmm. And so, if I put my name to that, now I have like that shit on my fucking. Right. That's what I okayed, you right. know? But then, um, I'm trying to like trying to think about like trying to find a fucking funny thing that I wrote recently, but I can't seem to. <laughs> yeah, about to pick my brother up from the airport. I think I'm gonna hit him with my car as an April Fool's Day prank. That's not actually funny. That's just like that's like a. It's like huh. Yeah. You know, just the idea of my f- brother walking out of the terminal and being struck by a, a Volvo. <laughs> no, you you've got some good ones. Hold Dude, on. Not right now. Not right now. I don't. Um. I really don't have any good ones right now. No, but you do. Gay bar names are so fun. They're like Tuck Jizz and Marianne and the Dirty Bar. <laughs> Can't even say my own fucking joke. These aren't funny. I just, I've like moved past like Twitter jokes to like just straight up like updating people on my life. I love that. <laughs> like you ever hooked up with someone and they say you have the butt crack of a much taller woman? Dude, have you ever hooked up <laughs> with someone? My Apparently my butt crack's too high. Do you have a low, do you have a low butt crack? I feel I like you do. I have a low butt crack. <laughs> I feel like I know that about you. <laughs> no, I, I I feel like you have. Yeah, I do. All right. <laughs> do you just want me to admit that on camera? I've got a relatively low fucking butt crack. We're going to go to the pool later. Don't <laughs> look. <laughs> Brittany, do a dive. I bend over and my shorts come down a little bit and you're just like, there's still no crack. I know. There's no crack. I feel like you just have a hole and no crack. <laughs> it's like a storm drain. <laughs> <laughs> oh I'm sorry, no, you probably have like a, it's normal looking butt. <clears throat> I won't look at it when we go to the pool. Also, you're going to be wearing a one piece. So yeah, I like- do wear a one piece. <laughs> yes. You don't want to see, my stomach is so stark white, <laughs> it could like blind an airplane. Yes. <laughs> you know how yeah. they, you like can't put bronze on the top of buildings because it blinds pilots? Yes. That's my stomach at the pool. Is somebody using a laser? It's just <laughs> you laying out at our pool? <laughs> You take down a spirit airline? <laughs> Just a reflective surface. Yes. No, dude. I mean, but that's what going outside is for. You tan your stomach. Well, not for me. I love a good tankini, and I'm not afraid of that. I wish tankinis would come back. They are. I used to love tankinis. Dude, Bella Hadid wears tankinis. Bella Hadid could wear a fucking potato sack. People would be like, the hottest trend. Yeah. Number 11, <laughs> Bella Hadid and a tankini. <laughs> Just, but it's only her. <laughs> okay. So tweet decking does violate <gasps> Twitter spam policy. They're violating community guidelines. Woo! We did it! We landed on it. <laughs> Which does not allow users to sell, purchase, or attempt to artificially inflate account interactions. And many deckers got suspended as a result. Still, they often return with new accounts and get right back in the game. Bingo! <laughs> <laughs> they always come back, you know? I would like to talk about Twitter jail and what Twitter <laughs> jail means to you. Oh, dude. Um... Fuck, what have I been in Twitter jail for? What have you been in Twitter jail? Yeah, I got banned. Yeah. I was in Twitter federal prison. I think I told one of my friends to kill themselves, but like mm. it was a friendly kill mm. yourself. It wasn't like a kill yourself. Yeah. Um, also, when I got into a Twitter fight with Tommy Laren one time, I got into <laughs> Twitter jail. Because then they like did that thing of where like um, her little cronies, I don't know if that's a good or bad word, um, her little goons. Yeah. I don't, is cronies a slur? Probably not. Okay, wait, no, but it felt wrong coming out of my mouth. I have to look this <laughs> it's up. It's a hard vowel consonant uh, combination. Wait, wait, I have to be 100%. Is is cronies a slur? <laughs> um, Wait. The word has a negative connotation, but it's not a slur. Okay, cool. Sorry, it just Beautiful. felt wrong. Yeah. Yeah, cronies. That's yes. so harsh. <laughs> yes. Um, but, like, yeah, they went through all of my videos where, like, there was, like, audio in the background of, like, someone else's song or, like, something like that. And then they, like, um, they did, like, a, a Sony or, like, uh, what are those, like, those takedowns when there's, like, music in it? And they're going to suspend. Copyright strike. Yeah, like, copyright strikes. And they're going to suspend your account if you don't. And they did that enough times where I was like, just let me delete the tweets. I don't On need- Twitter? Yeah, dude, that was a horrible, that was a horrible week. You know, <laughs> censorship on Twitter is a crazy thing. It really is. Like, 
it, it is very... And I, I get why during like presidential debates and all that, people are like, I'm being silenced. It's like we <laughs> us as creators tweeting about poop and cum are being silenced. Yes. Oh, I love the Twitter. Are you sure you want to tweet that? Yeah. Are you <laughs> yes, sure I you want to retweet this article that <laughs> you didn't open the link? You are yes, threatening sure. a senator. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tweet it. I want to tweet it. Um, I think that Twitter, as much as we don't want to admit it, is a private company. Is it? And so they can have rules. We don't want to admit that. I mean, like, as much as we want to be like, freedom of speech. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, they can fully take down things that they don't agree with. Yeah, dude. Just go outside and say what you want to say. Just go stand on the street corner, buy a soapbox <laughs> from Amazon.com. Yes. Go stand on on the corner until the police come and arrest you. If okay? The, if those, like, Christian people can stand on the pier yeah. and, like, verbally abuse teenagers yeah. who are getting their faces painted, yeah. then, yeah, you can also do that. You know, you don't have to be religious to yell at people outside. It's true. <laughs> and I've... I, for one, am so for more people going outside and yelling. Yes. I, Don't fucking yell at me in my comments. Dude, whenever I see, like, New York City TikToks and, like, someone's, like, honking way too long, someone will walk out on their balcony and be like, shut the fuck <laughs> up! <laughs> there are people with jobs trying to sleep ready! There are times in my life where I just can, I just want someone to scream, like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. And it should be me. Yeah. Yeah. I, and we nominate Sarah Shower. <laughs> I'm the town screamer. Yeah. I, um... <laughs> My college called me that, too. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, I've been in a Twitter prison, mm -hmm. not Twitter jail, and I was lucky to come back, but they gave me my account back with no verification, no followers, no drafts, no tweets, no nothing. Yeah. I even lost who I was following. Oh, like shit. Like, my following list. I had to start completely from ground zero. As often, I think... Why did I? Yeah. <laughs> Twitter is fun, but you do not. It, it's not. I would say it's fun 40% of the time. Yeah. I would say like most of the interactions past like 11 p.m. have fueled my BPD breakdowns. Mm -hmm. I know it's actually made me mentally worse. Dude, Selena Same. Gomez just came out and said like she hasn't actually been on the Internet for four and a half years. And it's been like so beneficial to her health. Oh, I believe her. Dude, if I go a couple days without the Internet, I like feel like a good person, <laughs> you know? Yeah, you come back to reality. <laughs> yes, I, I'm like, you know, like my skin is not gray. You know, like I can breathe deeply. Like, one of my, like, my sinus is clear. I'm like, what is this? You feel the sunshine on your <laughs> pale skin. Yes. Is this what living's like, father? I can smell again. <laughs> <laughs> like a Victorian child being brought into the sun. Yes. Oh, it feels so lovely out here. It's you coming out of your room when your phone's dead. <laughs> There's like been an apocalypse and I crawl out of the bunker. L land! <laughs> People! Food! I've been eating canned tomatoes for like the past like three years. Mentally. <laughs> Twitter is the equivalent of eating canned yes. food for years. Yes. Um, and there's, so we're going to talk about like a specific. Let's cut okay. that out, please. That one's going to like ruin me if I hear it. This is. <laughs> actually keep it in because Brittany laughed okay <laughs> dude my brain works faster than my mouth and my brain's already going you know, zero to 60 in yeah, two minutes fine, it's fine don't pump the brakes keep going <laughs> that was a funny thing I said zero to 60 in two minutes any car person out there will know that that's a, a car that is not working <laughs> I didn't hear that part I know but you said it pump the brakes I was like this is actually perfect all right guys suspension um as part of his spam crackdown <laughs> spam crackdown sounds like a really fun Bands. I'm sorry. That's good. I'm literally not... Cut that out. No, don't cut it out! No, please. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to start over. Suspension. As a part of its spam crackdown, Twitter has suspended multiple accounts li linked to tweet decking, the process of amplifying stolen content to make it go viral. I also wouldn't say it's... N is it always stolen content? Or yes. is it just... Okay. I would yes. assume that sometimes, you know, they give a... You know, they try to write their own stuff. Well... Yeah, and it doesn't go viral. That's why they have to fucking pay people to retweet their shit. Yeah. I also think that these are kind of two separate issues that are linked. Yeah. Of tweet decking, which is paying people to retweet your, and, you know, therefore creating what goes viral, mm -hmm. and then just flat out stealing viral tweets and yeah. posting it on your account. Yes. They're different things, but they go hand in hand because they're both <laughs> fucking not right. I know. Dude, I have to admit, I kind of did tweet deck back in 2009 because I would take like popular like tweets and put them on my Facebook. And I said this before, but all my friends yeah. were like, why are you so funny? And yeah. I was like, I don't know, man. It just comes naturally to me. And there's <laughs> yes. a big old noggin of mine. <laughs> there was a girl I went to like theater camp with who I kept stealing all of her Facebook posts and I put it on my own Facebook thinking that she couldn't see it. And then she like blocked me and I was like, oh, she could see when I stole her shit. I was just well, so- now where am I supposed to get my content, <laughs> <Yes>. bitch? <laughs> 
<laughs> but now I know better. Yeah. Um, so in order to clamp down on the lucrative activity, which is in violation of the website's detailed spam policies, Twitter pledged to put an end to any accounts being used to sell, purchase, or attempt to artificially inflate their... Did I read this? No. Okay. Um, it rules state that... Or to artificially inflate account interactions. And yes. that's a big thing that Twitter cracks down on is false engagement, mm -hmm. like artificial engagement. And that's why a lot of... I remember in 2019, 2020, a lot of our friends were getting suspended because yeah. they were being accused of mm -hmm. purchasing followers or purchasing engagement. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? And they just flat out delete their accounts. Mm -hmm. Like, deleted. And you couldn't even appeal it. No, you can't appeal it because Twitter made its decision about you. God, we really are just slaves to these apps. I have beef with Twitter because they I do too. owned Vine and then they cut Vine and then they laid off like 8% of their staff. I know that Twitter doesn't actually care about its like content they creators. They don't give a or, shit at yeah, all. Or anyone really. And actually having a, a, what's it called? The people, like creator. Um, Program? That or just like a creator contact, like people yeah. where if you have a problem with Twitter, yeah. you're supposed to have a designated person that you can contact. I had one when my account was banned. Worthless. Yeah. Worthless. What the fuck is your job? <laughs> yeah. It's like people keep replying to my tweets with a printed out picture of my face and come on it. And then you like reach out to Twitter. Hey, can you just block this one person? Uh, they can say whatever they want. This is the internet. <laughs> it's free speech. <laughs> but oh. then they send me like a little pin for my shirt. Yep. But thank you for reaching out. Yeah, thanks for this fucking baseball hat with a verified check mark <laughs> yes. on it. Oh, I'm going to burn it in a fire. I hate Twitter. <laughs> I love Twitter, but I hate Twitter. So I need to say I that Twitter. I love Twitter comedians yeah i fucking hate the platform yeah i think it's just like so ruthless more than more so than any other platform because you truly don't have to have your face in anything but you can have your words like just like fucking cut into someone yeah, yeah. it'll ruin you and also like being ratioed scares the shit out of me <laughs> it's so scary. Did, would you like to explain what being ratioed is to okay. those that don't know so like if you tweet something and there's like usually like retweets and likes and so like if you say something funny it'll get a bunch of retweets or likes however it's a really bad thing of when you tweet something and the quote retweets are like significantly more far outnumbered it means else. you've said something that you cannot return from or like <clears throat> you or you said something where you set yourself up mm -hmm. like i one time tweeted just complaining like years ago that i got this like duncan drink and there was more milk than coffee and so i was like i don't you hate it when duncan people do this and it was something else like a, a quick thing to say and it got quote retweeted with like stupid white bitch <sighs> there was literally so much more going no, on in the world i'm like no, no, you basic no. ass white girls and i'm like okay this i am basic and white and a bitch but like can you like I, everything you said is true i but also is this not annoying when you go to duncan when you go to duncan you order the the, the drink that you usually get but it's never the same yeah it could taste either good or horrible now if fuck jerry or dory would have tweeted that hundred thousand likes mm -hmm. but th that's because they don't know if they're a basic white bitch that's the thing is they're faceless oh wait also there was basic white bitch which was a, <laughs> yeah. a fucking account yeah. yeah but yeah that's kind of annoying so that's what a ratio is because now you have to deal with like because you, you can't individually defend yourself because i'm not going to be like no stop i'm not basic and i'm I mean, I'm white and i'm a bitch well you know what i'm well, kind of you know what i'm just gonna delete the tweet <laughs> yes you know you all kind of right yeah actually you have i a set good myself point. up for this you know what else is fucking hilarious is ratios on tiktok oh on tiktok comments where it'll be like let's say the video is some misogynistic guy being like the thing about females these days and it's just some bullshit the top comment will be ratio mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like six hundred thousand likes yes and the original video has like nine thousand likes yes. so it's like clearly this video is being pushed out a yeah. lot of people are seeing it not a lot of likes, not a lot of comments, but the comments that are there are people being like, you fucking idiot. Yeah. And but, that's that's a ratio. But here's the thing. Sometimes I like things, not because I actually like them, but because I want to return to them like later. Mm. They made like a point that I want to like, I want to touch on later. Yeah. So now maybe I'm contributing to like horribly toxic shit because mm. I'm like, I'll save that for later. Mm. <laughs> I'll think about this later yes. when I'm more equipped. Yes. <laughs> when I'm more equipped in three years. Yeah. Wait, the awareness. In December, hotline cram went viral when he tweeted a thread in which he called out dozens of deck accounts and urged people to block them. Oh, yeah. And then BuzzFeed, they linked a BuzzFeed article, but BuzzFeed steals all their tweets as well. BuzzFeed will take <sighs> your fucking tweet and put it in one of their several hundred articles they push out every single day. Yeah, and you'll never know. Yeah, and they've done it literally while I was working at BuzzFeed. <laughs> That's insane. When um, that first happened to me, when I was like, it was being sent to me by my friends, like, you're... 
you're in BuzzFeed. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> Just tried to drink this with a cap on. <laughs> you, uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Um, I thought it was so cool. And then I realized that that's literally what these people do. They just yeah. steal. BuzzFeed is a fuck Jerry. Mm-hmm. They just steal content. They steal memes. They steal basically personalities. And they just regurgitate it. Yeah. And people eat it up. They'll add like one intro sentence for SEO. Like they'll like these are the funniest tweets of this week. Yeah. This is what our intern collected when he was on his bike ride to school or yeah. something like that. What the fuck? Whatever. He's tweeting and biking. <laughs> <laughs> He's gotten in so many wrecks. He's immediately struck. Oh, dude, one time I ordered Jimmy John's and like their, um, their like slogan is like, it's freaky fast. And it like took like an hour to get there. And this guy shows up at my front door and his like bike is destroyed. And he's like, I'm so sorry. I got hit by a car. And I was like, are you still delivered my fucking sub? But thank you so much. I've also worked at Jimmy John's. <laughs> but- Where did you work? <laughs> in college Tea. you were have... slinging sammies yes but then you know you get hit by a car yeah I, every, it happens to everyone it happens <laughs> to the best of us you turn in your apron yeah, yeah. I used to work at Baskin Robbins really still have the visor and the apron if I give you a dollar will you sing no oh you do <laughs> did you ever do that though no Oh, isn't that like a policy thing? No. Did you do that thing where you like flip the ice cream upside down? That's Dairy Queen, girl. (laughs) (laughs) Baskin Robbins. What's Baskin Robbins shtick? 31 flavors. What's so special about that? (laughs) Just there's 31. Okay. One more than 30. Trying to think about the weirdest place I've ever worked. No. People would come in and sample all 31 flavors and leave. Yes. They would make me stand there behind the fucking glass and be like... (laughs) Did you have something better to do? No. (laughs) No, I didn't. I was also 17. Yes. They could have come in and been like, get on the floor and lick the ground. I would have been like, okay, I'm on shift. (laughs) I'm getting paid to be here, I guess. Sorry. (laughs) To your friends and family. (laughs) Okay. The old ground lick. You know what? (laughs) This is the state of course. One of the flavors is the ground. (laughs) One of the flavors is retail ice cream store ground yes. had to clean the bathroom one time someone pissed all over the wall it's a Baskin Robbins dude yes. you come in and just fucking spray your urine on the wall yes. I'm 17 yes. I'm in there crying mopping the walls <laughs> sobbing yes. oh I hate my job I hate my fucking job I want to kill myself mopping the walls come on please be kind to retail workers to customer service workers to food industry workers please <laughs> If anything, if anything, y'all just go out and eat and leave a fat tip for someone tonight. I used to work at this place right behind a concert venue. It was like the only place open after the concert. Oh, and I hated working those nights because every single time there would just be a thin layer of throw up all over the bathroom. No. And I'm like, I'm de- like fucking 21. I can't be touching everyone's throw up. Thin, watery veil of vomit. <laughs> you slipping it? Yeah. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Someone get the wood chips. <laughs> Someone get that pink stuff that you like put all over. Uh, I have referenced Cannibal Cookbook seven yeah. times. You've referenced Wood Chick Vomit seven times. <laughs> wood Chick. Wood Chick. <laughs> no, no. I, I, I just threw up in school a lot. You know. Why have you, you think actually? Because <laughs> I had um, indigestion. I don't know. I had like lactose intolerance. One time Did I. You should wake up and chug <laughs> a gallon of milk. And no, go dude. To school. <laughs> I couldn't. Like this is gonna sound so stupid. It took me forever to figure out I was lactose intolerant. Yeah. But I ate cereal every morning and I was like, I'm gonna be in pain. And then like at lunchtime, I would get a bottle of or jug of milk <laughs> and I would I would drink that and then I'd get to like fifth period and I'd be like doubled over in pain. I remember one time in AP US history, I was like, uh, Mister. Well, I can't say his name. I was like, I need to go to the bathroom. And I literally walked outside the class, threw up, and then I walked five miles home because I was just so fucking embarrassed. I couldn't go back in because it was like, you know, like where there's like the door and then there's like a big glass pane. Yeah. There was like a um, right next to the glass was a trash can. So I bent over and I threw up in it. And everyone in the class saw me, and I was like, oh, I'm just not going to go back in. Yeah. It was horrible. But Can't face this. Me and the janitor were tight. He was the first person to sign my yearbook. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Hope you go to the fucking hospital <laughs> yes. soon. Have a great summer. I am so happy you're graduating. <laughs> you have been the <laughs> parent of my... <laughs> Dude. I can't wait for you to leave this place. Yes. You have made my job a hundred times harder. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I also used to do this thing. So I'm like a really bad actor. And in high school, I wanted to get out of like class in the morning. So if you take uh, multivitamins on an empty stomach, you get really nauseous. My first period has watched me thrown up so many times. Well, like go to the bathroom to throw up. So that's just 
you clear it's traceable what you were doing to yourself but you're just like i wonder why i fucking vomit every day (laughs) yeah my entire class was just like sarah's gonna throw up at least twice this week (laughs) and and i always went home you know but then the thing is is like after a couple hours the stomach ache goes away and now you have the rest of the day free right i also used to do that thing where like last period i'd bring like a really short skirt and they'd be like "Uh, we can't if we send you home like you can't get back in time so i'd get like out like 45 minutes early nice yeah it's all about cheating the system. Don't forget that. <laughs> Throwing up and mini skirts. Vomit. Spaghetti straps. <laughs> mini skirts. <laughs> Period. Vitamins. <laughs> <laughs> Wood chips. The janitor. Um, um, <laughs> Mom, I fold up, yes. but you're 18. Yes. <laughs> Mom, I fold up and watch Five Miles Home. Teacher, I, I threw up. I threw up. <laughs> you're a senior in high school, Sarah. Get uh, a grip. Oh, dude, I've watched someone... Um, they were like holding their like fists to their mouth in class and uh-huh. they were just like shaking and they were like and I was like oh something bad is about to happen I moved away and right as I moved away they threw up through their hand like it just went like everywhere cause like <laughs> they came out like their fucking knuckles <laughs> it was like a sprinkler when you're like four <laughs> I was like, just go to the fucking bathroom. You carry wood chips with you. You're like, trust me, been there. Earl, I got this one. <laughs> you have them on speed they dial. They give me the janitor, like, at the walkie-talkie. <laughs> you do the secretary walk yes. down the hallway with your jangling yes. keys. You work here? No, just vomit a lot. Yes. <laughs> well, the carabiner is very gay, so that doesn't make sense. Oh, I can't realized, argue with that. I realized I was gay when I threw up a lot. <laughs> 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 Wait, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah, tweet decking. Oh, yeah, tweet decking. Um, oh, my gosh. So the thread <sighs> that they posted of, like, everyone blocked these accounts because they're tweet deckers, which I did. Like, mm-hmm. anytime, because I knew that tweet deckers stole my shit. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just blocked them, like, immediately. Now I have a bunch of random accounts blocked. Do yeah. you, like, Do you like block a lot of people? I'm not on Twitter enough to block people. Well, I mean, like, on any platform. Um, No. <laughs> because I used to, but that's, like... <sighs> That starts the chain reaction. Why'd you block me? Yeah. They will create another account just to like yeah. find you and be like, why'd you block me? I'm your biggest fan. Yeah. Oh, dude. I just don't want to fucking deal with it. Like continue to send me hate. I'm just like not going to engage with it. Yeah. They'll get bored eventually. Mm-hmm. Like I've been like roasted alive on like Twitter, but I'm still not going to block those people. The only time. My God, Brittany. The, yeah, I know. Only, the only time I block people is if they're homophobic or they're annoying as shit. Yeah. I don't care if they like me. And so yesterday I was on live on TikTok and this guy was like, Sarah, you've had me blocked since 2016. And I was like, since I wasn't out then, I can tell you 100% with 100% percent certainty you are annoying as fuck Mm -hmm. and that's why i blocked you and then everyone was like "Ooh, shut up yeah but i don't block people who are i rarely block people who hate me you know because they just get bored there's like this whole cycle where someone like usually spends about four months really focusing on your shit yeah and then they move on to someone else i'm saying just don't engage with it yeah don't get bored eventually yeah um you're talking about mass reporting of these tweet decking accounts here's an example Here's an example of one of so many copy uh-huh. and pasted tweets verbatim. Look at the engagement on these. <gasps> oh my God, I didn't even notice the numbers. Okay, so the tweet says, black or white, we're all just some egg for real. And it's, so it's one brown egg right next to a white egg. And then when they cracked it open, it's just two yolks. Obviously, yeah, it's two It eggs. has 285,000 retweets and 653,000 likes. And now the same thing is on another account by Three, another four guy. Four months later. Yeah, two hundred nine thousand retweets, five hundred five hundred thirty one thousand likes. It's just the same shit reposted. And they're also both quote tweets. Look yeah. at that. So not only is the original tweet being tweet or uh, stolen, <laughs> yeah, the quote tweets, Qu- quote tweets, quote tweets. Not only the original, <laughs> the quote tweet. Quote tweet is I am being on the stolen. verge of actually throwing up right now. Are you really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do we need to pause? No, I thought about it too hard. Oh, yeah. Okay, so yeah, even uh, the original were stolen and the quote tweets were stolen as well. <laughs> Where's Earl when you fucking need him? No, literally. <laughs> um, so a lot of the content that tweet deckers tweet are stolen. Like mm-hmm. 90% of the time, obviously. It's almost a plague now. And like, obviously, we understand how people can complain. But plagiarized tweets have been a part of Twitter pretty much since people started making jokes on the site, particularly yeah. through popular parody accounts, which is what I mentioned earlier, and yeah. I want to talk about it. Because, like, what the fuck is a parody account? Like, I, can you think of, 
I remember way back when there used to be a Ryan Reynolds parody account. Yeah. Where people would act like Ryan Reynolds. They would have a picture of him Ooh, as yeah. the icon, you know, da, 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 unofficial Ryan Reynolds. And then the bio would be, I am not Ryan Reynolds. This is a parody account. Yeah. And it would tweet shit like <laughs> fucking Dory. Yeah. When I, I just want someone to touch my butt and buy me pizza. Yeah. Ryan Reynolds? Hello? <laughs> Imagine. Well, actually, I feel like Ryan Reynolds might actually say that. But that's funny because there's so many layers of irony to like Ryan Reynolds <laughs> tweeting something like that. <laughs> yes. That is comedy. Yes. Someone acting, just like trying to get retweets because yes. they think they're retweeting right. It's just so <laughs> like, what the fuck are we doing? No. Yeah. Okay. So also, <gasps> why do they categorize themselves as parody accounts? Because I feel like, is curator not uh, like an option? No, because you know what it is, is that is one of the loopholes in the Twitter spam rules uh-huh. is if you're a parody account. This happened to me, actually, when the the meme happened. Someone created my profile exactly yeah. verbatim. My header, my icon, my bio, all the links, my pinned tweet. They recreated everything. Dude. And I re- I contacted them and I said, what the fuck are you doing? Because they were getting numbers. Yeah. Like tweeting my shit on their account. And then people were unable to, because I think it was, um my, I'm Brittany underscore Broski. They were Brittany Broski. Yeah. And so people thought it was me. And I was like, motherfucker. If you want to, like, retweet my shit, just retweet it. Why yeah. did you create my account 2.0? And they were like, um, you can't block and report me. I'm a parody account. Twitter won't let you. I'm a parody account. I'm a parody account. Yo, you're big mad. You're big mad. It's just like they just want to. Yeah, oh, just be fucking annoying. It just be annoying on purpose. They wanted to get a rise out of me. And so I had my followers mass block and report them. Yeah. Their account got taken down. They made another one. Shit. Parody account, parody account. You can't do anything because Mm -hmm. that is some bullshit loophole that all of these curator accounts do is that when you have parody in the bio, can't get deleted because it's a parody. There are like, I do want to stress that there are like good types of curators. Like we have a series on YouTube where we do Zillow Gone Wild and it's run by this guy named Samir who basically collects all of these like different weird Zillow listings from across the US. So there are ethical and good ways to be a curator that is true curation too because yeah. he's saving all those photos typing up a description yeah. putting all the information like you know that's a lot different i would say yeah and also like that's not his actual house you know no. like if, but the jokes when you curate jokes you're basically like writing them off as yours which is annoying but yeah and you know what that's a great segue because uh-huh. i want to talk about fuck jerry okay so there is an instagram account <clears throat> <laughs> Called Fuck Jerry. <laughs> Sorry, some bomb slipped out. <laughs> Can you keep going? Uh-huh. Keep going. Um, <clears throat> known for its aggregation of online content and internet memes. Created in 2011 by Elliot Tabili, mm-hmm. its popularity led to the founding of Jerry Media, which became known for their promotion of the failed Fire Festival. Did you know this? <gasps> Wait, they're he... all linked. Really? Yeah. Oh, shit. Later, Jerry Media co-produced Fire, the documentary about the failed music festival. The documentary was released worldwide via Netflix on January 18th, 2019, four days after Hulu released Fire Fraud. Shit. So they're capitalizing they're copying, on yeah. part of the festival that they <laughs> tried to put on. Yes. To be Lee also founded What Do You Meme? Oh, I fucking hate that. The what do you meme joke? Like, do you like, are you in it? No comment. Yeah, because they use my meme. Okay. I think I signed a contract with them, so no comment from me. I fucking hate it. Brittany loves it. (laughs) Brittany has been in... (laughs) When we go home at night... Oh, I've had fuck Jerry blocked for forever. It just says literally unblock. (laughs) (laughs) That's so good. I didn't even notice that he was blocked. It's like, should I unblock him so I can see his shit? Yeah. In 2019, Comedy Central pulled advertising from Jerry Media after there was an acknowledgement that they stole content and did not include any attribution to the original creators of the content. Uh Duh. In a February 2019 statement, Fuck Jerry said it would change its practices and ask for permission from Mm -hmm. the creators before posting any content. Bullshit. So uh, it took them being called out to be like, oh yeah, I guess the hundreds of thousands of posts that we're creating across all of our accounts. Because Fuck Jerry is... Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, they're everywhere. Yeah. Oh, 2019, dude? <laughs> it's when you're like, maybe we should tag the creators yeah, or ask like, for permission. It's been eight fucking years. Wait, I did want to... So I do like when people... Because occasionally, like, accounts will reach out and ask if they can, like, share yeah. your tweets. I did have someone actually email me recently if they could 
use one of my tweets wait 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 let me try to find this okay yeah tweet permission this lady named alice uh reached out to me and she said hi i'm working on a newsletter newsletter called off the record for young people trying to get into journalism at the bottom of each newsletter we always have a funny tweet of the week i really loved your tweet below about forgetting your it password and i was wondering if we could get permission to share this in our newsletter that's a lot different than just yeah they could have just screenshotted it, cropped yeah. your name out, and posted it. The tweet was, talking to someone in IT about a forgotten password, and I'm using words like okie dokie and Lord willing, so they think I'm just an old person and not a technologically incompetent 20-something. <laughs> Which is not particularly funny, but I imagine if, like, you know, it's, it's like a, it's a fun, innocent one that you could just put at the bottom of a sure. newsletter. Sure, And I said, for sure, Alice. Let me know if, how the readers like it. Thanks for reaching out. But yeah. yeah. But I don't think Fuck Jerry is the type of guy to be like, hey, would you like to, like, can I use this tweet? No, they'll do the thing where they'll DM you for proof. After you post it, after they posted it, though. Exactly. Yeah. Or, or they'll DM you, hey, we saw your tweet, can we use it? Yeah. If you don't respond within, what, 24, 48 hours, they'll post it anyway. Yeah. Just like so they said that they asked. Exactly. And they can screenshot proof. We asked and they failed to respond. Yeah. It's such Bullshit, dude. <laughs> it's really annoying. In April 2011, Tabili launched the Fuck Jerry Instagram account. 2011. Do you know how many fucking years they've been doing this? Wait. 11. Dude, I thought it was 2019. Oh my god. Yeah, it has. I was supposed to say eight. Oh my god, man. I've been in. Okay, yeah, it's, it's been 11, 11 years. years. <laughs> Shit. They gathered over 9.3 million followers for the next six years. And right now. The Fuck Jerry IG account sits at 16 million followers. Shit, dude. The same month in April 2011, he created the Fuck Jerry Tumblr blog. Uh -huh. They also launched the fuckjerry.com website featuring various Fuck Jerry branded merchandise for sale. Mm -hmm. We should buy some Fuck Jerry merch. <laughs> On June 4th, 2016, Tabili launched a Kickstarter campaign for a card game titled What Do You Meme? Mm -hmm. Featuring cards printed with various images taken from Tabili's Instagram feed. Within 24 hours, the page gathered upwards of 31000 of its $10,000 goal. Oh, this is piggybacking off this. This is something that pissed me off. There was like, you know, like Milk and Honey, you know that? Yeah. There was like a, there's a Milk and Vine, which is the parody of Milk and Honey. Yeah. So basically Milk and Honey is like this like. Rupee. Yeah. Kapoor, it's a poetry book. Yeah. There's like pictures. So someone did some fucking student. I really hated this. They like made Milk and Vine where they took popular vines and then they just. Wrote, oh my God. And they sold it. They literally sold all they did was write down what everyone said and then they drew like a really bad picture they made fucking thousands of dollars road work ahead i sure hope it does yeah. that's the poem yeah and then it's just like a road work sign on the page i and remember that, that whenever someone like told me that they bought it i'm like i don't i fu dude fuck you what yeah. are you talking about yeah. this is i know it's kind of transformative i guess but you also just took someone's joke and wrote it down yeah and why would i fucking like that as a viner you know and who the fuck is buying that you, our, our audience, I know our YouTube comments are going to be like, oh, you know, I was, it was a different time. Oh, I guess, dude. But also, like, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's like Gabby Hanna's poetry book. Well, that's just her own. That's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's just, just kind of bad. <laughs> yes. But it really is like, who is, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just because you like Vine doesn't mean that you need to. All right. Moving yeah. On. So. Let's talk about the reception of mm -hmm. Fuck Jerry because this really kind of started this idea of a stolen meme creation page. Um, on January 15th, 2019, Vulture editor Meg Ryder tweeted a screenshot of a sponsored tweet from the Fuck Jerry Instagram account, adding, When your stolen tweets bring you so much success that they turn into a sponsored post template. Mm -hmm. Over the next few weeks, she continued to post more Fuck Jerry posts sponsored by the comedy television network Comedy Central. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. It's not bad to repost maybe one tweet that you like on your Instagram. If it like fits into like whatever the fuck you're saying. Mm -hmm. But these people made got so many that they are making millions off of mm -hmm. it. Like if you're like as an individual user like, oh, this is bad. I took one thing and now I'm basically fuck jerry no like if you're making millions you have is... turned stealing other people's shit into a business yeah that's the difference here mm -hmm. so <laughs> in 2019 um ethan klein yeah okay h3 from the h3 podcast made a video on the phenomenon and it's really well done i would really encourage you guys to go watch it if, if you want to if you're interested mm -hmm. um and he he basically just goes in on fuck jerry about how these people were sat down, this Tabili guy was sat down by like ABC News. Yeah. And like obviously they're backed by Comedy Central and all this shit. 
They won a shorty award yeah. for best meme account. It's just like, and so ABC News comes in and they're like, on the spot. All right, you guys are the meme lords. So we're going to give you some prompts and some meme yeah. templates and throw us your best meme. Yeah. And it is so fucking cringy because you realize, this is when people realize. Yeah. They're not funny people. Yeah, they're not. They ABC News and all these fucking boomers and all these people think that it's this one guy yeah. typing up all these memes. Oh, he's the funniest person alive. Yeah. He is driving humor on the internet. No bitch. Mm -hmm. And so when you sit down, oh, it's so fucking cringe. When you <laughs> sit down and you watch this dude try to be like, oh, uh, when Bay doesn't want to have sex. <laughs> it is so <laughs> awful. It's so awful. It really is. And it also, like, this type of thing spreads to, like, every single creative, like, field. Like, if you're yes. a photographer, your shit has probably been stolen uh, and put yeah. on, like, a aesthetic photography yep. Instagram page that has three million followers. Pinterest? Your, Pinterest is notorious for not yeah, crediting people. Your shit's not credited, and then these people now get to sell ads with your photos. If you're an artist, an illustrator, yep. they're probably like, oh, I just like how this looks. If you're an illustrator, your shit, like, you get to tattooed on someone yep. a million times you know like it happens across like every single it's, it's unavoidable like, especially yeah. with how how fluid content flows on the internet yeah it's unavoidable and I that's kind of the state of the world the only funny version of stealing someone's shit is the um what is that like uh people like the art like the monkey oh, nfts nfts when someone's like i own this <laughs> I own this photo. And then you take a screenshot like a million times. I You own the photo, but I also have the photo. That's just funny because those like hurt the environment. Yeah. Those people are like dumb as fuck. Yeah. But yes. Those videos were the rapid yeah. screenshot. <laughs> you know what else is so fucking infuriating? Because even that like us watching that is, you know, internet comedians. <laughs> if that's how you want to identify <laughs> Of course it's cringe, but also at the end of the day, this dude has so many millions of dollars. I know. He could be on there and be like, when Bay is fam as fuck. When fam, bottom text. <laughs> Do you fart, bottom text. It's just millions of dollars. <laughs> Tibby Lee has a net worth of over $10 million. Damn, dude. That's a lot. <laughs> That's so many dollars. That's more than I have. And I don't know if you feel this way, but for me personally, if I've met a new friend mm -hmm. or if I'm, you know. You check their bank account. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Their location. Yes. Where were they born? Social security. IP address. Dox them for fun. <laughs> <laughs> when I make a new friend, I always check who they're following on Instagram. And if they follow one of these private meme pages, I'm like. Red flag. Oh, yeah, dude. Yes. Red flag. You so-called free thinkers. Oh, yeah. You follow fuck Jerry on Instagram, <laughs> bitch. What the fuck? <laughs> it's infuriating. <laughs> but then I also lose a little respect for them if I they do. follow me. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, if I mean, like, like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You <laughs> know what the new wave is, though, that I kind of want to talk about is, because I follow these. Yeah. Like Trash Can Paul, Patia's Fantasy World. Oh, yeah, Boys Can't Cook or something boys like that. Boys Can't Cook. Boys, um, those are all under this blanket of like ironic meme pages yeah. or Cringe Post Randy. Mm -hmm. These are all like curating <laughs> <laughs> the worst content of the internet. I'm going to give you an example of... So this person made this post maybe or like it's like not relatable stuff. It's like... Fuck, let me find something. It's it's like cringe humor. It's like cringe ironic humor. <laughs> yeah, like someone he posted a picture of this like peanut butter and jelly covered in jeans, and it says, Bay, you haven't even touched your peanut butter and jelly janwich. <laughs> See, like, it is so genuinely bad. <laughs> yes. Like you know, like they, you're laughing because it's ironic. <laughs> yes, there's like one that says, My favorite part of eating a bagel is looking the cream cheese that sticks out of its bagussy. It's just <laughs> so yeah. Because you know the type of people that are laughing at that. Me, you. <laughs> I'm so over the ussy jokes. People who've been kicked by a horse. <laughs> Brain hammering face in patience. about dude <laughs> I don't know. I my know. brain is at like five percent now I, I that's what i was trying to say is like <laughs> these are such low-hanging fruit yes and and maybe i'm just jealous and jaded that mm -hmm. people who aren't chronically online the way that we are yeah genuinely find that stuff funny Gina butter and jelly jam <laughs> yes, yes 
like if you're 30 and you have never been online, you're gonna fucking crack up at that. Yeah, exactly. But me, I've seen open assholes <laughs> online, <laughs> like the worst of the worst. Like I, it it's takes like, a it's, lot. It's like an open asshole with a caption like and follow for good luck. <laughs> it's like, okay, <laughs> angel number six. Yes. It's literally like, oh my god, <laughs> I, I've just seen so much online that that shit doesn't even make me like. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So, what really makes me laugh, and Stanley and I talk about this all the time. It's a circle. Yeah, where we are in this post post irony level of humor yeah. because for those of us that grew up online the traditional online memes like that aren't funny what's funny is making fun of what was funny 10 years ago yeah so when i see a post that's like when pizza's bay yeah <laughs> yes. because it's so cringe and so like you have to know the history behind it anyway yes. that's what those pages post where they curate awful <laughs> awful memes They're like, and that's what i laugh at like they wouldn't go viral but they would like a certain group of people enjoy them yeah, yeah. Other, um, like this one is just a glass of water. It says optimist. The glass is half full. And then pessimist. The glass is piss. It's great. <laughs> it's just a glass of piss. It's great. I would write that. Yeah. <laughs> Except yours would be cum. Yes. <laughs> the glass is full of cum. Yes. Other comedy curation accounts, which some of you probably know, Betches, Daquan, mm. Meme is R. Epic funny page. Epic funny page is what I'm going to change my... That's the <laughs> name of my uh, autobiography. Wait, wait, wait. I need to look up ep- epic funny page. What epic do they post? funny page, dude? That's so good. I know, okay, but here's the thing. You say post, post irony. Yeah. Epic funny page is like... It's just a laughing emoji. Is there like... <laughs> <laughs> like, that's funny because it's ironic. <laughs> but they're not being ironic. Yeah. Fuck Jerry, hood clips, meme.ig, pubit. Sarcasm only. Pubit. Pubit. That sounds like an app where you just like add pubes to someone. Where you expose your bush to people. No, no. Bush reveal. <laughs> no, it sounds like where you take a normal photo of someone and you just add pubes to them. <laughs> what was that app that Cody Co made? Oh, oh, it was like a caption app. Yeah. Oh, I don't know what it's called. Cap, cap that. Cap? I'd cap that. Probably. Something like that. Where it would just be any picture and it would auto generate a caption. Yeah. Like, me win. <laughs> yeah. Pubit is just like pubit. It's just like an auto-generated picture of pubes, and it's just something you know, like my wife left me. Yeah. Pubit. It's just like a, a college like frat guys like sink, <laughs> and then it's just like when your life when your wife leaves you, and it's just like a pube sink. I'd pube that. <laughs> Awful. And then there's meme.ig, and there's, oh wait, there's another more he linked. The 25 best Instagram meme accounts to follow now. I have no comment. There's, I want to see what puberty is. Pubit. (laughs) Pubit. Um... uh, one it says, when sh- why she do this? Um, it's officially spring. Can I get my hoodie back? And then someone replied, let me get back to you. And that's the joke. <laughs> that when you, you know, like when you're dating someone and they keep stealing all your sweaters. <laughs> no, it's so relatable. I know. When you guys break up and you keep all his stuff. Yes. <laughs> I'm not like the other girls. I sleep in my boyfriend's boxers. <laughs> like, so true. <laughs> Just the boxers? Yeah. <laughs> Shirtless? Actually, yes. that's kind of... Oh, maybe pubit's banned. No, pubit is... I'm literally looking at puberty. On Instagram? Yeah, it's called puberty. Puberty. Mm-hmm. You're going through puberty. <gasps> You're going through puberty. Puberty. Like, you... That's, that's Is good. that why they did that? That's really good. These aren't funny, though. These are just, like, facts. Weirdos. Puberty has 31 million followers, and it says bringing entertainment and news to a community of millions. News. And it's literally just, like, NASA shows images of Pluto. <laughs> No, Stanley, just, what the fuck is this? It's just, it's just uh, NASA zooms in on our pool. It's just your <laughs> stomach and my open asshole. <laughs> something so bright and something that consumes all light. Oh, fucking black hole. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm trying to neutralize your stomach. We're sheen. witnessing a celestial phenomenon. Yes. Is that an eclipse? <laughs> That's just violating community guidelines. Wait, these are memes. Are doesn't have any memes on it. Do memes. you know what? I'll admit, I talked shit on Betches earlier, but I follow Betches and they have good stuff. And they credit the creators. Mm-hmm. I'm friends with the person who runs Insta Single, mm. and that is where we have to dial it back. Yeah, 
You yeah. got it. I'll pump the brakes on that. Yeah. Isn't it crazy how you make exceptions for your friends? Yeah. And that's why they need totally unbiased juries. Um, yeah. So um, sarcasm only has tweets that have 64,000 likes. I'm tired of pretending to be chill. I am insane. <laughs> so I take that back. I didn't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I did not giggle. <laughs> I like those. Like, I'm not a fucking chill girl. Yeah. I am clinically insane. Please hesitate to contact me. It's <laughs> good. I actually think that those that would be funny, like, at the end of an email. Yeah. Please hesitate to reach out. Please ask a neighbor and phone a friend before you reach out to me. Yes. Yes. Um, men be like, I'm different. Yeah, a different type of disappointment. I don't think I've ever heard a man say I'm different. I've never heard a man say anything that's worth repeating. <laughs> I don't even say the Pledge of Allegiance. Because I was like, that shit is boring as fuck. Yo, did a fucking man write this? <laughs> At least Betsy Ross yes. wrote the national anthem. She Wait, no, she made that towel. Wait, Betsy Ross. <laughs> Betsy Ross made the first American flag. Oh, wait, is she the lady who started... Um... This is going to be a stupid question. Never mind. Nope. Go ahead and ask it. Ross, the superstore? Yeah. And Marshalls. And <laughs> yes. TJ Maxx. Betsy Ross started TJ Maxx. <laughs> Who wrote the national anthem and why? <laughs> and why? <laughs> oh, Fran- Francis Scott Key. He shot Abe Lincoln. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> the Star Spangled Banner. The poem, originally titled The Defense of Fort M- Henry, <laughs> M apostrophe Henry. M- Henry. Do you think that people get excited when they hear the national anthem? I used to. <laughs> really? I used to say, oh, I know this one. <laughs> I, um, my mom, since my mom was in the military and we lived on base a couple times, I know I pause for colors, but that's pretty much it. You know, like when they play like colors in the morning and night. What? Do, 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 yeah, do. yeah, yeah. It's kind of funny when, like, everyone has to stand still. Is that not called taps? I call it colors. I think it's different. But I think the actual song is called taps. Am I wrong? That's when someone dies. No, dude. No. Okay. Oh, my God. No, this is... That's when someone dies. No. No, 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 no. Morning colors. My God. This is a ad. Brittany, stop. (laughs) Oh, wait. That's Revly. That's colors. No. Dude, that is I'm going to I'm going to is colors the same? <laughs> That's Revly. That's the wake up call. Dude. Beep, 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 Every single member of the United States military. <laughs> please comment down below. <laughs> colors is plays when you like wake up and then like when the sun starts to go down. But that's it, right? Yeah, but no, okay. that's not it. Oh, that is that colors? It? Yeah, that's... that's the end of colors. So how does it begin? I don't have a trumpet. Well, then we'll never know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the mystery remains unsolved. <laughs> <laughs> we will solve it the in a couple of, weeks. Of the United States military, <laughs> I've exhausted all my military knowledge. <laughs> They're no—they know that I'm grasping at straws. <laughs> You're like, it's when they um, <laughs> the American flag and they um, salute it. I just know that I lived on Paris Island and Camp Pendleton, and I've heard that shit all the fucking time. And you still don't know that it's called Revly. Have you ever lived? Your dad was in the Air Force, right? Yeah. What is it called? Okay, so like um, camp is usually the, what they call it before it's like a Marine base, and fort is an Army base. What do they call it when it's an Air Force base? Um, Just the base. Oh. I was going to say a liberal arts college. I know the difference is on an Air Force base, it's called the BX instead of the PX. Oh, why? Because yeah. it's bullshit? I don't know. All right. <laughs> Sorry, I was raised <laughs> with a Navy family. Yeah. So I'm supposed to, my parents told Air me. Air Force I was, hates the Army. I, well, I think everyone hates the Air Force. That's T. I never knew that. Yeah, I think the Navy and the Marines are like butt buddies. And then mm. you're supposed to hate the Army and the Air Force. And Air Force people are supposed to be like hoity-toity. I think maybe that's the reason is people yeah. are jealous of the Air Force. Yeah, you definitely give off Air Force vibes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Air Force derogatory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my dad was in... Um, Vietnam. Pilot. <laughs> yep. wait, wait, what? Your dad was what? <laughs> my dad was in World War One. <laughs> He's George Washington. He's 140 years yes. old. Um, he's, uh, <laughs> we've got him entombed below our home. Yes. Uh, he's an A-10 pilot. Okay. So he was in the Gulf War. 
Yeah. Technically. My mom was in Operation Desert Storm and Shield. That's wild. My mom was also deployed Afghanistan, Iraq, and then like this thing around the coast of like South America. That's wild. Yeah. Bay of Pigs. <laughs> Bay of Pigs. Your mom met JFK. Uh, yes. <laughs> was he at the Bay of Pigs? Uh, that was his whole deal with Cuban <laughs> Missile Crisis. Oh, wait. No, I thought the Bay of Pigs was during the Civil War. No, girl. That was in the 60s. The Civil War was in this. I'm kidding. I'm totally yanking your dick. Um, guys, we're not actually this stupid. <laughs> Under the table? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, my mom was deployed like five or six times. And she's like a, a veteran. Did yeah. she bring you back a cool shirt? <laughs> I was deployed with, with, the, with the United States Navy. And all I brought my daughter was this <laughs> oh, t-shirt. Yes. Um, no, she didn't really bring me back anything except trauma, sadness. Oh, she was, you know, whenever I see like a military coming home video, like they're always like the dad, like is everyone's like super happy. My mom just like never smiled afterwards, That's you know, really sad. I know, man. Shell of a human. She was also kind of a bitch when she left. Wow. Well. I'm not going to. I'm sorry. Actually, no, mom, you're not listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> Serious, mom, you're not here. No, you're not. But she was, um, she was a doctor or whatever. Let's keep going. I think that's it. Really? Wait, I have a little, uh. In summary, mm -hmm. in conclusion paragraph that I would like to say. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> right in my nose, dude. <laughs> oh, why would you do that? Right in the fucking... <laughs> I thought that hurt, too. She's drinking Red Bull. Oh, fuck, man. <laughs> that went right up my fucking nose. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <coughs> Shit. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. Yeah, dude. Oh my god. Here's my paragraph. <clears throat> There's ultimately no accountability or justice in online plagiarism. It's happened to both of us, and it won't stop anytime soon. In a just world, the real credit and permission given would be money or a percentage of yeah. some of the ad sales that people like Fuck Jerry are making. Yes. Um, because they'll steal a tweet. And have that be a promoted post or, or a sponsored post. And the original poster gets none of that. So in a just world, I think that that is how you would repay. If you're going to steal someone's content, pay them. Mm -hmm. uh, but we know people won't do that. So yeah. it's just something we have to deal with. And I think the only way to combat it right now is to block and report mm -hmm. those accounts. And tweet things so shitty. Yeah. No one would ever think to steal it. Yeah. May insulate yourself from <laughs> yeah. plagiarism by tweeting awful garbage. I'm literally <laughs> going to piss. Insulate myself. <laughs> Put up your defenses. <laughs> yeah, no, I would pretty much agree with all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, this has been Violating Community Guidelines. With me and you. Me and you. And you. Us together. Listener. Thank you guys so much. Be sure to like and subscribe. Leave us five stars. Leave us five comments. <laughs> Give us five likes and five subscribes. We just talked about like spamming. And we're like, guys, spam and like really inflate our numbers. Spam post. Um, Am I beautiful and hot? <laughs> yes. DM to find out. Yes. <laughs> Porn bot. Any single boys here? Am I cute? Am I cute? 51 America. <laughs> Brazilian flag. <laughs> <laughs> Be sure to leave those comments. Love you guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Oh, God. I had to pee now, dude.